All right, today we are going to show you how to get your AC ready for summer. Uh, last week I was sitting at home and I got a text message that says, we are not barbarians, we need air conditioning. So I took that to mean that my customer needs us to come out and look at their air conditioning. So uh, I've got Andrew helping me today and uh, we'll, we're going to start off with this. The homeowner last year ended up putting this away and do a real good job. They could have done a little bit better job of putting the air conditioner away. They put a tarp on top of it. If you look, it's always good to cover the very top, but if you if you look at if you look at the coils, when you cover it up for winter, you shouldn't cover it up all the way to the bottom with plastic. You should only go about two thirds of the way down and cover the top. And the reason for that is so that it can still breathe and it doesn't rot it out. So Andrew, you want to take that cover off of there. All right. Um, why don't you, Andrew, why don't you take that hose and rinse that stuff off of there. Right now we've got the power and everything off of this unit. So rinse some leaves and stuff off there, Andrew, is what I'm... Okay, next what we're going to do is, remember we do have the power off, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the screws out of the door. Andrew, if you want to go ahead and start taking those screws out. What we're doing is getting to the electrical section. There's a screw there, a screw on the very top, and a screw on the other side. And those three screws should get us to the electrical. Don't forget the one on top there, Andrew. Now he'll set that on top. Now if you look inside, you can see the wiring. If you, Hey, Andrew, is that wire burnt off right there? See where the light is? Is that wire good or is it burned off of there? Uh, yep. Uh, it's on there. It's on there? Okay. Okay. Um, what you see in here is you're going to see a few different things. You have what we call a capacitor, which is that piece right there. Over here to your right in the back, that's called a contactor. And uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to check the amp draw. With all the wiring looks good. But we're going to check an amp drum. We're also going to check voltage across here just to see how it does. Uh, if you want to, Andrew, go ahead and open the electrical box and you can put the power, pull that out because it's in the off position, flip it over, and push it back in. Okay. Not going in all the way? Nope. All right. See how it lines up? Does it say on when you flip it over? Yeah. Now push it. No? All right, hang on. Okay, what we're going to do next is, is we're going to check the uh, contactor and see what voltage we have. So as you look at the meter, we have nothing. Go ahead, Andrew. All right, we have 100 and 120, well, 130 volt or two. I'm sorry, 230 volts, which is good. Uh, now what we'll do is go ahead and turn the unit down. And we'll check the top.
All right, we went ahead and started the unit. Now that meter I have is probably, I don't know, $125 meter. You don't need that expensive a meter. Just go buy yourself a real cheap one at the hardware store. Uh, he checked the bottom where the main power comes in. That's how he got that power reading. Now he's going to check the top and, and we're going to see what voltage he has there. Go ahead and check the top, Andrew. Or just check it again. But you're, now you're going to check the other side of the on the top part. Look in there. You'll see what I mean. There's wires coming out the top. Yeah. Hold one on each one. So red on black. I'm guessing. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Just one on one and one on the other. Hold it on there. Ready? We got 230 or 229, 230. We're right on like we were before. So okay. So we're good on the electrical for that part. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to do an amp check. If you look at the face plate of the unit, you will see it gives you amperages. It says unit supply 208 230. Compressor is 12 run load amps. That, that's what RLA stands for. And the fan motor has five full load amps. The 0.5, I'm sorry, five. Yeah, 0.5. So about 12.6 is what we're looking for for our amp draw. So now we'll check our amp draw on the unit. All right, go ahead and check the amp draw on that. What he's checking is the two lines coming in, the two power lines, one at a time. Now, what do you got reading on there? Nothing here. You have it all the way closed, Andrew? It's not like the wire's not pinched in between on the meter? No. Okay, turn it towards me a little bit. Can it says 0.FL. All right, hang in. For the black, I get... Can you tilt it towards me a little, Andrew? Uh, 740. 7.40. Do the other one. Turn it this way and hold it. 7.12. Uh, yeah. 7.10. Okay. Okay. So we're looking good on there. That all looks good. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the temperature of the line set. Andrew, if you want to take and see where I ha see right there. Yep. You're going to have to give me the temperature of what that is here. I need a thermometer. You just hold the button on the back. Got to get right to it. Get right up by it. Don't be on the insulation though, Andrew, just be on the, uh, it's that little cap piece. We're down below, it's a little bit lower, right there. Oh, that's what I mean. Yep. Uh, 52.3. 52.3. Okay. Okay. Now there's a little insulation missing that should be replaced right there, but grab that, Andrew, and see if that feels cold, that line right there. Right here? Yeah, the old systems you'll feel cold. Feel cool? Yeah. Like it would be sweating if it were hot out? Real hot out? I'm not. No? Okay. Uh -huh. Pretty well, 52 cool. degrees is pretty cool. All right. It says it's like 60. Well, yeah, get right on it though, because the wider you are out with that thermometer, the less accurate it'll be.
And it averages out to uh, 58. Cool. Alright. Okay. Now, Will, something you won't be able to do, but we can do, is you can hook your gauges up and tell how your charge is. We're going to do that a minute. We're also going to clean these coils. Um, cleaning the coils is something you can do on your own. Um, checking the Freon level, you're supposed to have a special license that I have, an EPA license. So, uh, you can get those online too. It's not a, not a big deal to get an EPA license. All right, we're going to go ahead and start cleaning the coils here in a minute. All right, we're going to start spraying these coils with some cleaner. Go ahead, Andrew, you can spray those. Go from top to bottom, Andrew, because it'll run down. There you go. Then keep moving to this, move to your next set. Nope. Okay, start on the next little ones and go down again, Andrew. Even though the coils may not look that dirty, they can really, they have a lot of times have a double row of coils in there. And those coils can be pretty dirty. He's just using a sprayer with some cleaner. It is a little bit acidic, so you got to be careful with it. Mm -hmm. Just keep working yourself way right around the back as you can see the dirt is just pulling right out of there. Extremely nasty. You want to follow all the coils all the way around. Right. Okay, keep moving, Andrew, so you don't run out of your chemical. Hold it up at a little bit of an angle, too, pointing downwards. There you go, because that'll help it run down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. See that? Perfect. Now what we'll do after this is we'll just take a hose and we'll rinse this off. Once Andrew's done putting a second coat on. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and rinse it. Andrew, if you want to go ahead and start rinsing. 
Nope, stand back. Stand back and rinse okay. it. No. Okay, as you can see, we've cleaned it all up. And as far as a homeowner goes, that's about as much as you can do. But it's a good idea to clean those coils. Check your electrical if you can. See if you see any burnt wires in there. Cover it up in the winter and in the springtime, uncover it. Uh, we do. We will have some other videos coming on how to check the superheat and how to do some of the other things in the near future. So you can uh, look for those. And uh, that's it.